Hey guys, happy you're here with us again today on this lovely Wednesday. Um, before we jump right into our study of Colossians continuing on in this wonderful letter the Apostle Paul wrote, um, I want to encourage you and challenge you, stick with us throughout this entire video because at the end we may have something that you want to hear. Uh, you may be upset if you don't stay till the end and you miss out on what we share. Yeah, I'm just not going to say more than that because I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it. Okay, um, so you have something to say? <laughs> I was just going to say, <laughs> if I was them, I would have like I'm just fast forwarded to the end. To but do it. yeah, I've already, don't be that person. Well, and I've already thought about that, so you can't do that because the the way that we're going to tie it together is, yeah, high IQ plays right there. <laughs> well, hey, we're going to be looking at. Colossians chapter 2 today, we looked at the first uh, three verses last week, and this week we're going to look at, actually we're going to tag on verse 3 and look all the way through verse 8. Um, actually, we might, we might end up reading verse 9 as well, um, but we're going to kind of try to narrow this down like we have been to some specific theme, some specific point. Um, so, so be trying to focus and read along with us as we read this. Sit down and read it by yourself. Meditate this um, before or after this video. Hopefully, if you haven't before, then, then after you watch this video, then sit down and really um, look at this passage. Look at the whole book of Colossians and just read and meditate on it and think about what God is trying to teach us here. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and start in verse 3, all right? It says this. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. I am saying this, Paul says, so that no one will deceive you with persuasive arguments. For I may be absent in body, but I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see how well ordered you are and the strength of your faith in Christ. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, overflowing with gratitude. Be careful that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit based on human tradition, based on the elemental forces of the world, and not based on Christ. For the entire fullness of God's nature dwells bodily in Christ. So, there's a lot to cover here. But first, I want to share this with you. We do have an enemy. Um, we're surrounded by an enemy that we refer to as Satan, Lucifer, and these, these demonic forces, right? And some people think it's crazy to believe that. But actually, the more that I pursue Christ, the more I see that this is a reality. And so what you need to realize about this enemy, Lucifer, Satan, right? Um, he's the father of lies, Jesus said. He's an enemy that wants to ultimately pull you away from Christ or stop any growth spiritually in your relationship with Christ. He wants to stop you, if you are a Christian, from having an impact on this world for the sake of the gospel, for the glory of God. He wants to basically shut you up. If you don't know Christ, he wants to fill your head with all sorts of things that will ultimately push you away from Christ. And I believe that with all of my heart. Um, and so... The reason I bring that up is because one of the things we see in chapter 2 of Colossians is Paul's writing to these believers, and he's saying, all right, don't be deceived by these empty philosophies. Don't be deceived by, by these traditions of men, these elemental forces. Uh, what you had here with these, these group of believers is you had certain people who were trying to take Christianity, and they were trying to tack on other things with the faith in Jesus Christ. So we already know that Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2 that we are saved by grace through faith. It's not anything that we're doing, any works that we're doing that's ultimately saving us. It's simply the grace of God through the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. We're not doing anything special. We're not better than anybody else. Um, we are saved by grace through faith, right? And so what you had here is you had a group of people who was, who was one of the things they were saying is there's this Jewish tradition of circumcision. And one of the things they were, were saying is, okay, you have to be circumcised if you're truly going to be a follower of Jesus, if you're truly going to be saved. In other words, they're saying, yeah, you have to trust in, in Jesus by faith and do this other thing. 
you know, with these people, you also, I'm sure, had all sorts of other types of deceit and, and people just basically trying to take these believers' minds off of the truth that is in Christ, as we see Paul say in verse 3. What does he say? He says, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. They're trying to take their minds away from Jesus, from setting their minds and their hearts on Jesus, pursuing the knowledge of God and, and everything that we need to know that is in Christ and set their minds on something else. And so these enemies, these people that were trying to do this in the church, one of the things we need to realize in this is, yeah, they're operating based off of their flesh. They're operating based off of selfishness or whatever motive, but intertwined with this is the working of a spiritual enemy that's seeking to destroy the faith of believers, that's seeking to pull believers away from Christ. Um, and so it's vital that we realize this, not because we should be afraid, but it's vital that we realize this because if we are ignorant to this, then we're, we're giving the enemy an advantage. We're ultimately putting ourselves in a position where we are prone to, to be ineffective for the sake of the kingdom of God where our eyes are going to be set on all the things around us and not on Jesus. Um, so I'll kind of, I'll stop right there for a second um, because that was one of the main points I wanted to make is, is be alert, be on guard. Uh, there's two other points that I kind of want to share, but I wanted to ask you, Emily, do you have anything that is on your mind right now or am I putting you on the spot? Um, no, it's okay. I think the whole being alert thing, I think I can read that and just scroll right past it, or scroll right, you know, read right past it, and not focus on that part, because it kind of doesn't make, like, I just think, it is, it's not one of those things that just jumps right out to me, honestly, and so I have to sit back and say, what does it look like for me to be alert, like, what does it look like for me to be watchful, does it mean that I, like, have binoculars outside my house, and I'm just, like, ready for whatever, no, 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 like, what does it actually mean, and it's... Hmm. For me, it's awareness and seeking the Holy Spirit, and it is saying, Lord, like, show me my sin, show me my, like, where I'm easily tempted as I'm walking in the light, and I can see my sin clear, more clearly, like, let me be ready, Father, like, look, give me words to say, so it's more for me, being alert means constant in prayer, and yeah. so, um, I don't, you might have kind of said a little bit of that, I was just no, no, about, no. Uh, what it means to be alert. I think that's an easy phrase. We can just be like, I don't know, does that mean like I'm like standing ready or is that like, what is, I don't know. Yeah. I think part of it, me rambling, is I'm still trying to figure out what it looks like to be alert. Um, maybe it means not being exhausted all the time yeah. and maybe it means like, hey, I've got to manage my time. I can't stay up late and watch an extra movie because tomorrow I need to be rested to be alert, ready hmm. to like defend um, my heart, defend sin. Like, yeah. That kind of thing. Well, and, and Emily's right on track with this, being alert. Here's, here's kind of this picture I'll, I'll share a little bit, but Paul kind of points to, I believe, two things that are going to help us have not only, we already have victory in Jesus over this spiritual enemy. We already have victory in Jesus from our flesh, from the sin that entangled and enslaved us, right? But something, some two things that really give us sort of just, consistency and walking in that victory um, that Jesus has provided for us, that Paul points us to, are, are in verse 7, we see, he says, rooted and built up in Christ, established in the faith, just as you were taught at the end here, overflowing with gratitude. So being, being joyful in Christ, realizing the gift that God's given us to be in relationship with him realizing all of the good things that God has given us. And, and we do realize, right, as Christians, like, again, this house that me and Emily have, right, we wouldn't have this house if God didn't want to give us this house, right? Um, God doesn't give everybody a, a, a house, right? Some people are homeless, right? God doesn't give everybody uh, a meal to eat every single day. And that's like, it's hard to swallow. But even if God strips away all of this, right, we trust that he's going to be providing for our greatest need, whatever that may be, whether it's a spiritual need or a physical need. Well, God it's always knows. salvation. Yes. But what I'm saying is, the point I'm making is, we, it begins with salvation, and then all these other things that we take for granted, right? Yeah. I'm not saying God is going to give you this, right? We don't preach a prosperity gospel. But I can still take these things, and, and I should always take everything, whether whether 
we have a nice house or not a nice house, whether we have good food or not great food, right? That I should be thanking God for these things, mm -hmm. having gratitude in Christ. Ultimately, we will have gratitude in Christ when we see the gospel clearly. And Paul says what the gospel essentially is in chapter 1, verses 21, right? He says, once you were alienated, you were separated and hostile in your minds because of your evil actions. Because of our sin, we were separated from God. We were alienated, pushed away from God. We, we rebelled against him, right? Mm -hmm. But verse 22 says, but now Christ has reconciled you by his physical body through his death. He's done this to present you holy, faultless, and blameless before him. So if Christ has done this ultimate work of, of wiping away our sin, granting us forgiveness, dying the death we deserve, again, what Emily said, salvation, right? What we're talking about. This is the greatest thing that we should be grateful, we should have gratitude in, that God has provided salvation for us. Then every other thing in our life, even in suffering, we can have joy and we can be grateful. Uh, Paul also says, I believe it's in... In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 or 5, he says, give thanks always in all things, right? Always be giving thanks. We talked about that at True North uh, about a couple months ago. Um, so that first thing, that first way that we defend against this enemy, we kind of walk consistently uh, fighting against this enemy is by setting our eyes on Christ with a heart that's grateful, that's with a heart that's filled with gratitude, all right? So our hearts should be focused on the things that we should be thankful for that God has given us, right? The second thing uh, we see actually in chapter four of Colossians, verse two, Paul says, devote yourselves to prayer, stay alert in it with thanksgiving. He kind of combines the two in, in this verse, right? So Emily talked about staying alert, right? Being alert, aware, don't be ignorant that there is an enemy, right? Like be aware of it, Right? So you can see what's going on, so you can understand what God's calling you to do. You can know your weaknesses and know where the enemy's going to attack you. Right. But Paul says, devote yourselves. Devote yourselves. Right? Some of us devote ourselves to a Netflix series. We say, I'm going to binge watch this whole show you know, in two days. Right? Maybe I'm going to do it in one day. Right? We're devoted to that show. We want to watch it all in one day. Right? We, we find it so easy, what I found, at least for me, and, and when I look at other people, right? I, I look at myself first, take, the, take the, the log out of my own eye first, I find it so easy to be devoted to all these other things around me, uh, much easier than I, I find it to be devoted to prayer. Right? And so there's an illustration I wanted to share about prayer that I didn't come up with, that one of the pastors that me and Emily like to listen to sometimes um, shared in a sermon. But when we, when we think about prayer, right, and when we talk about prayer, if prayer aligns our minds with God. Prayer kind of helps us meditate on the truths of God, be in that relationship, that connection with God to seek Him, right? And so when we pray, here's the illustration. It's like we're kneeling down on a bee's nest and a bunch of bees are swarming now all around us. A bunch of evil bees are now swarming all around us as we pray. All right, if you're like, what, do you, what is that? What do you mean? What this, what this is saying is every time that I, I sit down, I, I, I bend my knees to pray and seek God, right? What I find is every single time, this is crazy, every single time, I begin to be like, boom, 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 bzz, 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 like this distraction, this distraction, this distraction. Oh, I could be sleeping right now, so let me hurry up this prayer. Oh, I could be going and playing a game with my friends, so, so let, me, let me pray quickly, and then, and then I'll go play that game with my friends. Oh, well, well me and Emily, we're going to eat dinner, so, so I got to make this prayer quick. Oh my goodness, I, I, just, I just put my head down to pray, but now I see that there's some, some dirty laundry over on the ground. I got to go pick it up, Right? <laughs> Like, that's usually not me. That's not one that I show with. Maybe that's why she's laughing. But the point is, <laughs> when you get serious and you say, okay, I'm going to seek God. I'm going to pray to God. How long is your prayer usually? Do you pray for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute? Have you ever prayed for 10 minutes? 11 minutes, 12 minutes. <laughs> We got a we got a funny girl over here. I'm sorry, but yeah. That's, that, but that's like serious, right? Yeah, it's like, so I was thinking about I just wanna interject just a second. Just yeah. so I, I relate one hundred percent to what Matt said that when I sit down to pray, um, it's like my brain turns into this like 
magical and focused thing. Like I am type A. Magical and focused. Can like focus and get the task done. And then so often when I sit down to pray, my brain goes like crazy. I think mm. about everything else. Um, but yet I can sit on my couch and think about some crazy s analogy scenario for 20 minutes and just get so wrapped up in thinking about this one thing. Or maybe for you, it's like, I can sit down and have this TikTok mm. like music thing in my head for 20 minutes and it, and it doesn't go away. Or I can mm. sit down and think about like a way to improve Anna Joy's sleep schedule and just think and think and think. Or I can think about, there's so many things that I can easily lock my mind on. And I am focused on that for mm -hmm. so long. Even like social media. I can get my eyes on social media and for, I mean, I'm zoned in for so long. Yeah. But when I sit down to pray... It is so, it's so hard. Like, I don't want to come across as, like, prayer life is easy all the time because it's not. But no. what's cool is that when I'm reminded, when I'm watchful of the fact that the enemy hates my prayer life, hates me seeking the Lord, d desperately wants me to be distracted, it helps me sit down and fight to, to pursue the Lord, to fight for my walk with him. So, for example, I am really competitive. Like, I love um, I love sports. I used to – I don't love them as much anymore. And I love um, college football. I don't, like, love, love it until it's, like, a rival game, right? So, I'm a South Carolina fan. Um, and I'm a huge South Carolina fan when they play Clemson, right? It's not that fun right now. But it's, like – I love the team more when I, I have an enemy that I know about. You know what I'm saying? So maybe, like, when I played soccer in high school, I enjoyed it, but it was way more fun when we played our rival. I don't know if you can relate to that, but it's like when we know our enemy, I have this whole different preparation mindset. When I'm playing a team that I don't really care about or when I'm watching a team I don't really care about, I'm not on defense. I haven't thought about it. I haven't focused my mind that day but when I know my rival yeah. I sit down and I'm ready to work and so it just kind of reminded me of my prayer life when I, when I get down to pray I need to know the enemy is ready to distract me mm -hmm. and he is he does not have victory here mm -hmm. and when you're a child of hit of the Lord a child of God he does not have victory over mm -hmm. you and so when you sit down for your prayer life like when I sit down we need to know our enemy wants to destroy us, and we need to fight to choose. I'm not like, that distraction squashing it. That distraction squashing mm -hmm. it. Um, or take that captive and um, just be ready, be active, be alert. Um, that's why I can't pray laying down in bed because I'm not alert. Mm -hmm. I am drifting off to sleep, and I want, I desperately want to be in the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I appreciate all that, and that this. I think this also applies, I don't think, I mean, I know, this also applies to when we seek God in his word. Mm -hmm. Whenever, I mean, the same thing happens usually when we seek God in his word. We begin to get surrounded by all these distractions, right? Okay, well, I'll give five minutes to God, but, but then I'll go spend two hours doing X, Y, or Z. And I'm guilty of this, right? It's, it's frustrating. One of the, but we'll kind of we'll wrap it up here. One of these these stories that I I saw I remember reading that was interesting is there's this book by C.S. Lewis called The Screw Tape Letters and it's essentially like a a book where he's writing as if you know this lesser demon is talking to his his uncle demon who's higher up and they're talking about how they're going about tempting people right it's just an interesting book to go read but one of the points in it they're talking about prayer and and he says do not focus all of your efforts any of your efforts on the prayerless christian go and take all of your efforts towards the praying christian it's the praying christians who are our enemies right the praying christians who are actually seeking to do the will of god and so we, it's just frustrating because for the guys, this is just me being vulnerable. For the last like two years, God has constantly brought me back to this theme of prayer. Like, okay, Matt, you need to realize how serious it is coming to me in prayer, how much I'm going to grow you and train you as you come to me and meditate on my word in prayer. And I've seen that I've taught on it over and over yet. It's still a constant battle for me. Like someone come and tell me, that you have a consistent prayer life where you pray more than five minutes every day, right? Like, I believe that that is rare in the church, mm -hmm. right? And that's, that's not a good thing. That means that, that hey, we're kind of losing some ground here. 
Think of what would happen if we would truly sit down and meditate on the word of God in prayer and pray to God for more than five minutes each day. Think about it. God will hear our prayers and listen to what Paul says in Philippians chapter four, verse six through seven. It says, in everything, again, Paul reiterates this point, prayer and thanksgiving, prayer and gratitude, in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So closing it out, right? And I was closing it out with that, that kind of speaking on that little story from, from that book by C.S. Lewis, but really like bringing that to a close. What we see is whenever we're doing these things, seeing the victory that we already have in Christ, we're going to God in his word and prayer, we're, we're giving thanksgiving to Jesus for this work that he's done, right? God will fill us with peace. God will show us where he wants us. God will take us where we need to go, right? It doesn't mean that our will is always gonna be done because when we have this attitude, we have the mindset, okay, God, your will be done, right? Just like Jesus in the garden when he said, Father, not my will, but your will be done. That's our attitude in prayer. And God will accomplish his will as we seek him this way. And so when I say this, we have got to again come to a place where we're asking ourselves, okay, am I actually being effective? Am I actually seeking the Lord? Because right now, what I've noticed is there's lots of people all around us, online, social media, everywhere, that want to set our minds on some philosophy, some elemental distraction, some tradition, right? Something that will take our eyes off of Christ and put it on something that's deceptive, something that is from the enemy. And so let's commit to both pray individually and keep one another accountable. So maybe you and a friend are watching this video. Maybe you know of a friend who needs to be reminded of this, right? Let's, as the body of Christ, as a ministry, right? Seeking to go and take the gospel to people all around the world. Let's do this together. Let's hold one another accountable, all right? So I hope you guys, uh, I hope you were able to understand kind of the point that, that we believe Paul's making in here. I hope that you're able to be encouraged and strengthened and, and I hope you'll leave this being challenged to give thanks and gratitude to God and Jesus and to pray in all things, right? And so I'll let you share and then I have one that final announcement that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Do you have anything you wanna share? Um, I guess I'll say really fast. A lot of times when I'm reading, I like to say like, all right, what gives him credibility? Like, okay, Paul, I hear ya, hmm. but... Um, and Paul, obviously, if you know much about him, he didn't have a life that looked like what we would give tons of thanks for if we are hmm. not following the Lord. So someone else who's not a believer would see Paul's life and find zero reason to be grateful. I mean, he yeah. was persecuted. He was, I mean, all the things. He was in prison when he wrote this letter. Yeah. So, so. he, um, he has room to talk. He like, for him to tell me to be thankful, I understand that he's walked the road where his greatest, like he knows thanksgiving because he knows jesus and then um just the interesting fact that i was just scrolling i don't know why i keep saying scrolling flipping through and just seeing scrolling in a bible first thessalonians second thessalonians second timothy philemon all those books he does the like the greeting and then it's thanksgiving and prayer like paul is practicing what he's preaching and he is constantly being thankful um constantly showing gratitude so it's just a good reminder that um he was practicing what he's preaching and we want to practice what we preach so. yeah yeah well, thank you guys. Thank you, Emily. Announcement. Yep, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm getting to oh, it. Oh, sorry. So the announcement is this. If you got to the end of the video, if you hung out with us, high five. High five, then I turned off the camera. So we're gonna edit it in. Um, if you've gotten to this point in the video, here's what I want you to do. I want you to comment down below something that you see in this passage. It can even be what we talked about in this video. Kind of put it in your own words. Show us how, how you are learning in this passage, what God's teaching you. Um, and so if you learned something, if you were listening, like if you're thinking, share. like and share, right? But do that. The first person that we see comment on this video, uh, we will text you and we will bring you a shirt. All right? Boom. Shirt. We will bring you a shirt. All right? A Northside shirt, not just a random yeah, shirt. Yeah, we're not just going to bring you a random shirt. Okay. We're going to bring you <laughs> We're going to bring you the shirts that we got. All right? So, hey, thank you guys for watching. We love y'all. 
Let we us know if you need anything. So miss you guys. Peace out. Bye-bye.